It feels like these guys, you, sense a lot of opportunity in this rather turbulent world that we're living in. Look, the, uh, the environment, uh, there's always opportunity, and uh, there's a lot of um, consternation in politics and things out there, but uh, the world's generally in a pretty good place right now. The economies of the world are either good or they're actually, some of them are improving. Now, there's a few going down and not quite as good as last year, but it, on balance, if you look back over many, many years, it's pretty good in the world, in the environment. So in the news, obviously, is Brexit maybe happening, maybe not happening, maybe happening soon, maybe not. You're a huge landowner, landlord uh, there in London, Canary Wharf specifically. How do you, how do you play all this? Look, this is a long game. We invest for many, many years. Uh, we make investments assuming you're going to have issues when you go through it. This one just happens to be political. Um, we just don't pay attention to the short-term news. It will be what it will be. We assume everything will work out in the long term, and I'm quite positive it will um, in one direction or the other. And. Uh, and I think London is a great place, a great global place to invest, and it will be for a long, long period of time. And have you seen any change in your business in the in the run-up to uh, Brexit? In fact, not a lot. In fact, the, the underlying fundamentals of most of the businesses we have, which are $20, $30 billion of businesses, are um, pretty good. So I, I, we haven't seen a lot of change um, yet. There has been some, but not uh, significant. In fact, some are doing better than they were uh, years ago. Uh, you and I were just on stage together in front of an audience, and, and one of the things you mentioned was across your asset classes, uh, infrastructure, private equity, real estate, you've raised about $50 billion in this uh, latest round. There's $1.7 trillion in private equity alone out there. How, how worried are you about sort of the amount of money chasing deals at this moment? Look, our... Um I'd say our advantages are our operating people, our global nature, and the scale of our business. And when you're trying to do value things uh, like we do, it's those three things combined that um, can give us an advantage. I, I just, we don't see an issue with putting that scale of money to work. Um, I don't know if there's too much money in the world for what other people do, but given the franchise we have and given what we do globally, uh, we can put that money to work prudently and earn the returns that we need to earn for our constituents. So as you talk to your team back in New York, around the world, in London, you've got some team here. As you talk to your colleagues here, what's the biggest thing people are worried about as we go through 19? What are you most worried about? Look, we're 10 years into a cycle. At some point, the cycle isn't going to be as good as it is today. It always turns. Um, they have not been repealed, so that's number one. Number two is interest rates. Uh, interest rates, if they go up a lot, it's um, that's an issue just with all asset classes, and we don't think that's going to be the case, but those are, are two um, things that we worry about that aren't really controllable. Now, we control some things. We finance our businesses as prudently as possible. We can ensure anything we buy, we know is going to go through a recession at some point in time, but you can't control everybody. Uh, given all that we've talked about, are you a net buyer or a net seller in the world right now? You know, last year we uh, invested $35 billion. We sold 12. Um, this year, I bet we'll, we may sell more than that. I'm not, I don't know we'll invest that much. Last year was a bigger year. So um, we, we're always a net buyer and a net seller. I would say on balance, we're more conservative than we were a number of years ago.